Mitchell James Richmond III, born June 30th, 1965. In today's feature, I'll give you three reasons some say he shouldn't have made the Hall of Fame. I'll also tell you how I feel about those claims and if I disagree or not. Quick reminder of how a Hall of Famer is selected. To even be considered, you have to have been retired for four years, had an outstanding career before and outside of the NBA. Of course, what you did in the league matters, and how you carried yourself on and off the court is also considered. Although some things are silent and represent human emotions and understandable favoritism, some of these things we'll talk about in relation to Mitch Richmond. When talking about 90s basketball, there's no way around talking about the shooting guard crop of that era. In my opinion, this was the greatest era for off-guard competition in a league where more teams were for the most part equally matched and you didn't have players piled up on one team to compete. The best competition came from that shooting guard position that if not for Michael Jordan, who was just on another level, guys like Mitch Richmond may have been more of household names and stories like this wouldn't be written. He was an NBA champion, six-time All-Star, All-Star Game MVP in 1995, made an All-NBA team five times, Rookie of the Year, played 14 seasons, and inducted in the Hall of Fame in 2014. With all that, why do some not think he's deserving of the induction? Let's get into it. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth. Let's get it, man. Quick reminder, if you want exclusive content like workout videos, ad-free features before they release here, and more, head over to the Patreon page now and become a supporter of pushing these stories and efforts to help any young hooper not have their growth stunted. It's something I wish I had but didn't, so it's my offering to you. Appreciate you guys. Please drop a like and comment on this video and let me know who I should do next. Enjoy the video. Mitch Richmond was a 6'5 guard from Fort Lauderdale, Florida that began his college basketball journey at a small community college in Mobley, Missouri before transferring to Kansas State for the remaining two years of his eligibility. At Kansas State, his teams made the tournament in both seasons and the Sweet 16 as a senior. He left college as a top-rated player and shooting guard, and in the 1988 NBA Draft, he was taken fifth overall by the Golden State Warriors and was the second leading scorer on a team that made it to the second round of the 89 playoffs. He averaged 22 points, 6 rebounds, and 4 assists as a rookie, and won the Rookie of the Year. He's the only player in his draft class to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. Stunt number 1, Shining on Bad Teams Some of the criticism Richmond's selection receives is because many feel like although it says he won a championship in his bio, that win was as ring chasing as it gets. It was his final year in the league, at 36, where he played just 11 minutes a game, averaged 4 points, and shot a career-low 29% from 3, when it's one of the things he was known for. He caught the last of the Dynasty 2000 Lakers championships as one of the last men on the bench and clearly a non-factor contributing to wins. Would the Lakers have won without Mitch? Yes, no question. With his first team, the Golden State Warriors, they made the playoffs two out of three seasons. Tim Hardaway, who joined the team in Richmond's second year, was the final piece to the trio that was known Run TMC along with Chris Mullen. Don Nelson implemented a high-paced offense and Richmond benefited from it along with the passing of Hardaway. He averaged 22.7 points a game over his Golden State span, 5.5 rebounds, and 3 assists. Would you consider that a Hall of Fame start? I'd have to say yes. Other than winning a championship, you couldn't ask for a better start to your career. The Warriors weren't who they became, but making 2 out of 3 playoffs for Mitch is his strongest case for Hall of Fame as he did show he could be productive on a good team. Because of much needed size and versatility, Richmond was traded for Billy Owens to the Sacramento Kings in 1991. 
It's here many fans think Richmond should have been penalized for his shining on bad teams. He spent seven seasons in Sacramento and made it to the playoffs just one time, where they lost in the first round. He was racking up points and achievements for the Kings with a career-high 26 points a game in 96-97. He made it to the All-Star Game six of seven years with the team, but the Kings were one of the worst teams in the entire league for years. Richmond could have went to a winning team, but chose the scoring and money and stayed with the Kings, even though they had no prospects of winning. Would I consider this Hall of Fame at this point? I would have to say no. If you give any NBA player 20 plus shots a game on a team that isn't expected to win in a small city like Sacramento where the fans love you regardless, they could do the same thing. I can't say his play was remarkable, which is what the Hall of Fame is supposed to represent. Even as a scorer, I wouldn't consider 26 points a game Hall of Fame as a scorer only. It's not his fault a winning team wasn't put around him and it takes a lot to deal with that and competing at the shooting guard in the 90s. But Hall of Fame? Eh. Stunt number two, he was never the best guard. Another criteria that helps a Hall of Fame case is a player being the best at his position at any point in his career. Playing in the 90s as a shooting guard or guard period was a difficult feat to accomplish because of the competition at the position at the time, dominated by Michael Jordan, followed by guards like Grant Hill, Gary Payton, Tim Hardaway, Sprewell, and more that were all considered for the guard spot on the All-NBA first team and beat out Richmond in every year he was considered. Mitch would have to settle for second and third teams, to which he made five times. According to his pairs, he was one of the toughest guards to compete against, being as big as he was, along with the tough nose style he played with. Although he wasn't selected as the best guard in his prime, as a player, he individually was just as good as those guys, and with a little more wins, could have just as much been selected for an All-NBA first team. But according to the criteria, it presents another strong case for why he maybe shouldn't have been selected, especially as early as he was. Then there's the perspective that had he been on better teams, his numbers wouldn't have been as good as they were, as he had an easier path to being considered not having to deal with the pressures and physical energy it took to go deep in the playoffs and contend. Stunt number three, achievements. A player's achievements as a basketball player in total, whether before, in, or after the NBA, is also considered in a Hall of Fame case, and Mitch Richmond had a lot of them. It's probably the biggest reason he was selected for the honor. Prior to the NBA, he was an NCAA second team All-American and had his jersey retired by Kansas State. In the NBA, he was the Rookie of the Year, six-time All-Star, winning the game's MVP once, five All-NBA teams, and an Olympic gold medal with Dream Team 3 in 1996. Would you consider those achievements significant enough to be considered for the Hall of Fame? I honestly can't say that I would. Yes, those look good and sound nice when set together without context, but when you consider reasons one and two, basically him not being on teams where there was pressure to win and his points all counted towards winning or not, those achievements don't seem Hall of Fame worthy. It's like Damon Stoudemire in Toronto. Had he stayed there and played through the losing, he would have too put up amazing numbers. In 98, he was traded to the Wizards for Chris Webber, and the Kings immediately began to win in Richmond's absence. His new team, the Wizards, missed the playoffs every season he was on the roster, and his numbers declined every year until he signed to the Lakers in 2001 and chased a championship. All in all, I think the Hall of Fame should be held for players that were remarkable. It just makes the achievement that more rare, respected, and keeps the integrity of the selection. Would I say Mitch Richmond had a remarkable career? I'd have to say no. 
And with everything said, I don't agree with him being selected as a Hall of Famer, especially over guys that haven't made it like former teammate Tim Hardaway or Chris Webber. No, they didn't win a chip, but I mean, how much weight do we really put on that Lakers win? He was still an unbelievable player that competed neck to neck with the best guards of the 90s and carried himself exceptionally well on and off the floor. No matter my opinion, he is still in the Hall of Fame and that should be respected. But for these reasons, Mitch Richmond, in my opinion, shouldn't have made the Hall of Fame. Not yet at least. It's your boy JC Stunned Growth and I'm out.